Bears fans, I don't know about you, but I am fired up to finally have a punt returner that I can rely on. That, of course, is Trent Taylor. Ryan Poles confirmed that he is coming on board earlier today. We got a lot of reaction to Ryan Poles' press conference, practice squad signings, injury updates as well, all that coming up. But before we get to it, if you're excited to have Trent Taylor and a reliable punt returner, like this video. I want to get to 1,500 likes on today's show. Let's make it happen. My name's Harrison Graham, and you are watching Bears Now by Chat Sports. Tevin Jenkins is headed to injured reserve, which means he will miss at least the first four weeks of the season. And we told you guys live earlier today that this was the expected, one of the expected roster moves to make room for uh, the waiver claims, Trent Taylor, et cetera. And this does clear the way for Trent Taylor to now uh, officially be able to sign. We'll talk more about Taylor later on. But for Tevin Jenkins, uh, it means, once again, another setback here with him with the injury. He'll miss the first four weeks. You look at the first half of the Bears' schedule here, that means – at minimum, he will miss the Green Bay game, FGB, I'm rocking the shirt, at Tampa, at Kansas City, and then Denver at home. He would be eligible to return against Washington on Thursday night football. Hopefully he's there then. If not, hopefully he can return against Minnesota, Vegas, or at least by week eight, you would hope. So hopefully it's just four weeks, but uh, obviously we will monitor this as we get closer to him being able to uh, return off of injured reserve. Predict it for us. How many games do you think Tevin Jenkins will miss? I'll, I'll take the half-class uh, full approach. Four games, he'll be back week five. That's my prediction. Hopefully there's no setback and he is able to return then. Now, with this uh, move taking place, we have the full circle of moves that have ha taken place today. Terrell Lewis waived. We talked about that earlier today. A.J. Thomas was waived to make uh, room for the second claim, which claim number one was Khalid, uh, Khalid Kareem. Uh, to essentially replace Terrell Lewis. Uh, Quindell Johnson, he was the uh, defensive back safety that they claimed. So Thomas out, Johnson in, Lewis out, Kareem in. Tevin Jenkins to IR, and then Trent Taylor uh, fills his spot. So you're back to 53 players on the roster at this point in time. Now, shifting to some injury news because of Tevin Jenkins heading to IR. Last time we uh, talked uh, injuries, a lot of guys were out. They were sidelined. Well, now only four players didn't practice today, which that's a step in the right direction. Of course, one of those is Tevin Jenkins, but Doug Kramer was not seen at practice. Neither was Jaquan Brisker. He's probably the one I'm a little concerned about most right now. And Dylan Cole still not out there after he did make the 53-man roster. He missed the final couple of weeks of preseason and the training camp. But the good news is a lot of guys returned today. A lot of these players have missed practice in recent days and weeks. And, uh, Chase Claypool included. He was back out there, so was Bayless Jones. Uh, Nate Davis in pads today. You love to see that. Lucas Patrick uh, was back out there. Darnell Wright, after tweaking his ankle, he looked good at two in a couple of video clips I saw. Uh, Demarcus Walker, Rasheem Green, they had been missing some time. They were back out there. Eddie Jackson, Josh Blackwell, Jalen Jones, three members of that secondary. And Dan Feeney practiced for the first time. The center guard hybrid that they traded for from the Miami Dolphins. Uh, Ryan Pohl spoke highly of that move. He feels uh, confident about Feeney coming in here and giving them some versatility on the interior of that offensive line. We'll explore what that week one offensive line could be a little bit later on in the show. But good to see Feeney come here. He, of course, knows the system uh, playing in that Mike McDaniel Dolphins uh, offense during camp. And before that, uh, Mike LaFleur with the Jets coming from, obviously, his brother Matt LaFleur. But before that, the Shanahan tree. Very similar offense for Dan Feeney. He is very, very familiar. Before we get to some other news and notes, including some practice squad signings, uh, Rocket Money sponsoring today's show. The Bears save some money by cutting guys like Travis Gibson and Kendall Vildor, and you can save some money by downloading the Rocket Money app, a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Most people out there think they're spending around $80 per month on subscriptions. I wish. The reality is it's closer to $200. Yes, $200. That's a little bit pricey if you ask me because what happens is you sign up for free trials. Your buddy tells you about a new show you got to watch. So you download a new streaming service. All of a sudden, that money adds up. You forget about some of those subscriptions, and you're getting billed for $150, $200 bucks per month with all these different outlets that you have signed up for. You can cancel them with the single click of a button. 
with Rocket Money. It'll list all your subscriptions on one screen. You click cancel next to the ones you don't want. They will cancel it for you or give you simple steps to do so depending on what that service is. What I also like about Rocket Money, they can help negotiate to lower your bills. All you got to do is take a picture of your utility bill, your homeowner's insurance, etc. They'll find you a competitive offer. You might be able to lower your bill by up to 20% per month. Over 3 million people have downloaded the Rocket Money app. Guess how much they're saving on average per year. Producer Coop, can you guess? No? $720 per year on average. You know what I could do with $700? I could go on a vacation. I could take my wife out to like 10 nice meals. I could get PJ diapers until he doesn't need diapers anymore. Rocketmoney.com slash bears now. Use our link to download the Rocket Money app today. Helps us out. Show love to our sponsors. And uh, you're going to help yourself out because you're going to be saving money with Rocket Money. Link in the comments and description of this video. Okay, practice squad. Let's talk about the players they have added so far. 11 players added, which means six open spots. You're probably thinking, Harrison, that's bad math. No, the Bears have 17 slots because they have an international pathway program player. Uh, so these are the guys they have added so far. Most of them re-signings. Robert Burns, in fact, I think all of them are. Uh, the running back fullback hybrid who I liked in preseason. I'm glad to see him back into the fold. Simba Webster at wide receiver is back as well. Steven Carlson at tight end. Uh, as much as we made fun of the guy for dropping that touchdown, uh, I think you needed a tight end on the practice squad. You only have three on the active roster, so I'm fine with this. Aviante Collins returns, as does Roy and Batekeda. I think I botched that again. Uh, Bateka. Uh, Mbaketa. Embateka. Coop and I are working on it. I looked at the pronunciation before the show, and I still botched it. I'm practicing. I apologize. He's the International Pathway Program, so he doesn't count against uh, the 16-man practice squad. Uh, Travis Bell is back. Glad to see that. Jalen Harris as well. Micah Baskerville, really glad to see him clear waivers. Uh, Demarquise Gates is back in the fold as well. No Michael Walker at linebacker, so we'll see what happens with him. Greg Stroman Jr., and then Kendall Williamson, the rookie seventh-round pick. Also back six open spots. Um, we'll talk about Nathan Peterman, if he's going to return uh, in just a little bit as well. Uh, I would imagine uh, that is pretty likely. Join the family here at Bears Now. Subscribe for the latest coverage, news, rumors, trade buzz. We cover it all here on this channel. Hit that sub button and turn on that notification bell. Just click it and then select all. That way you never miss a video. All right, let's get to some press conference takeaways. Ryan Poles, an assistant GM, Ian Cunningham spoke to the media today after all the dust settled and talked about uh, a variety of topics. And number one, Trent Taylor is the punt returner. Uh, they covered that exclusively, extensively. And I'll be honest, as soon as I saw the Bengals were going uh, to cut him, I was like, Bears need to sign him. Now, Ryan Poles did say they're still going to continue to develop Bayless Jones in practice, and they hope long-term he can be that guy. But... For now, it's Trent Taylor. He is uh, consistent. You are confident in him back there. And Ryan Poles, essentially, I've got the quote right here. I can just read it for you. He said, uh, when asked about Trent Taylor, consistency, when the ball gets punted, you can go grab a snack and go to the bathroom and come back and feel confident about it. So, yeah, first of all, shout out to Poles for thinking of fans in this time because a lot of time on fourth down, that's when you take a leak. That's when you go get a refill. Uh, not when Bayless is back there because he might drop the punt. So uh, Trent Taylor is going to catch it. Not as explosive as Bayless, but he's reliable. Averaged over 10 yards of return, and he's excited to be here as well. He tweeted this out. Also a photo at Hallis Hall. Said, couldn't be more excited about this one. Great people all throughout the building. Ready to get to work at Chicago Bears. And I didn't mention the, this earlier, but I'll mention it now. Played under... Bears special teams coordinator Richard Hightower in San Francisco from 2017 to 20. So that relationship is in place. Polls gave Hightower credit uh, for that uh, being a big part of this signing. So uh, that's good to see. Collaboration in the building uh, to get the right people in here. Okay, week one offensive line is still in flux uh, with Tevin Jenkins on IR. Now, we know who the tackles are. If Nate Davis is out there or is ready to play, which he was practicing today, he'll be the right guard. The question is, what does left guard and center look like? I think it's going to look like this. I think Lucas Patrick, if he can stay healthy, which pick if, uh, will start at center and Cody Whitehair will be at left guard. Other options, Dan Feeney could be at center with Whitehair at left guard. Whitehair could be at center with Patrick or Feeney at left guard. 
You could throw Jatiri Carter in at left guard, but I think that's the least likely. It doesn't seem like they're going to go down that path. They could. They want to continue to develop Carter uh, as a backup and ease him in uh, to uh, his career. So I think it'll look like this, but Feeney could be a real option. They traded for him for a reason, and with Lucas Patrick's unreliability through a year and a half here in Chicago, don't be surprised if Feeney gets an opportunity. Uh, Ian Cunningham explained the defensive end swap, and look, I'm still not thrilled about Terrell Lewis not being here, uh, but I thought he had an interesting quote in what he had to say. They obviously cut Terrell Lewis, claimed uh, Khalid Kareem from the Colts, who, again, they watched up close in joint practices and in that second preseason game in which he had a sack against the Bears, three sacks in total in the preseason. And Cunningham made an interesting point. He was asked about Terrell Lewis. He said, did a great job, showed us a lot as a pass rusher, and he made it clear this isn't really about Lewis. This is more about what they see with Kareem. So he said that. But with Kareem, he said he could play the run and the pass. So what that tells me is for backups, they want a guy who can do a little bit of everything. And I think that's why Rasheem Green is still here as well, because even though he didn't show as much in the preseason as a pass rusher, Alan Williams the other day had an interesting quote about Rasheem Green about, oh, he does the dirty work for us. And what does that mean? Well, to me, that means he's willing to get in there against the run, uh, you know, that type of stuff. He's not just a go-get-the-passer guy, which maybe that's how they view Terrell Lewis, as a guy who can just flat out go get the passer. Now, if you're asking me, based on what I've seen, again, I don't see every practice. I don't do the film study of every rep for every player inside the building, both at practice and in the games. But from what I have seen and can evaluate, I would have kept Lewis. Doesn't mean I wouldn't have gotten this Kareem kid. It, it, they, I think he's got something here. But I would have kept Lewis. Why? Even if you don't think he's great against the run? Well, guess what? You were dead last in the NFL in sacks last year with 20. So if Terrell Lewis could go get you five or six, like, that's intriguing to me. I get Kareem had three in the preseason. He also has one in his career. So to me, this is a bit of a gamble in that regard. I get it if they think he's a more complete compl uh, player. I guess I can't complain too much about it. But um, like I said earlier, I'll say this to, from a half-class full perspective. I don't think cutting Terrell Lewis and claiming uh, uh, Khalid, uh, Kareem here is like the difference in you being a high-level playoff team or not. So that's the good news. But I just thought Lewis earned it, and I thought he should have stayed on the 53. All right, a couple more here. Tyson Bajant, uh, you just listen to the, the coaches, uh, polls now today, Cunningham. He earned this QB2 job. There's no doubt about it. Uh, he outperformed P.J. Walker, and they credited him. And I thought this was cool, too. Uh, credit Patrick Finley with the tweet here. Uh, Poles texted Bajant, he said, earlier today and said, be an asset to Justin, be ready. I think he added congratulations on front of that, basically saying, hey, you're on the team, but you got to, you know, you got to be an asset. Being a backup quarterback in the NFL uh, is not just like your playing ability. You got to be a resource for Justin. You got to watch film. You got to see things on the sideline during games, help him point out like coverages and this and that. Um, great, cool moment for Bajan. I mean, a D2 kid to make a 53 male roster for the Chicago Bears, beat out PJ Walker and Nathan Peterman, a couple of guys who have been in the NFL for a while. Uh, that's awesome. But the job starts now. Like, the hard work is not even close to over. It's really just beginning in some ways, but seems like Bajant can handle it. They seem to think he can. Now, I still think there's quarterback tinkering uh, to come potentially. We'll talk about that here as well, but uh, they want to keep Bajant around. There's no doubt about that in my eyes. All right, I'm rocking the shirt. We're 11 days away from week one, Bears Packers. Can I get an FGB chant in the comments? FGB, FGB, FGB. Spam it down below. Got to beat those effing Green Bay Packers here in 11 days. All right, more on quarterback. Bears want Nathan Peterman back. Now, I don't think they want him back on the 53. I think that could be the uh, sticking point here. Um, but they definitely would take him on the practice squad. You got six open spots. You need a third quarterback in that QB room for practices and whatnot. I thought Brad Biggs uh, had a good note here uh, saying that – or quoting polls on the really hopeful in terms of getting Peterman back – uh, just a thought, and this is Biggs on his own, Peterman is considering options. There might be a team out there that would put Peterman on the 53, or maybe there's a practice squad opportunity elsewhere where there's more money involved. Who knows? But uh, if Peterman goes elsewhere, you're going to have to bring someone else in, uh, to, at least to the practice squad. You can't just roll into the season with two total quarterbacks on the 53 and on the practice squad. So, you know, there's the Colt McCoys of the world are out there. I tweeted this out earlier. Matt Corral, 
got cut. I didn't love him coming out of college out of Ole Miss, but he was a third-round pick. Now, that's not really the veteran voice that the Bears are probably looking for, but he's an intriguing guy to bring in here potentially. I wouldn't do it, but I know a lot of you guys liked Kellen Mond coming out, uh, P.J. Walker to the Browns practice squad, so Mond is still out there. Uh, Josh Johnson could be a vet you could go get. He could add uh, the Bears to his uh, repertoire of teams that he's played for. So we'll see. I still think Peterman back to the practice squad is the most likely scenario, but they will add a third quarterback at some point in time. And then lastly here, a little bonus one. Ryan Poles completely dismissed the Darnell Mooney and Travis Gibson trade buzz. He first of all said with Mooney there was never a discussion there. Uh, you know, he didn't call out Brad Spielberger for mentioning him as a trade candidate, but he just said that was never discussed in the building. And then he flat out denied uh, Travis Gibson or anyone from his camp coming to him to seek a trade. Said it never happened. Um, doesn't know where that came from. So, Jeremy Fowler, you're on the hot seat. But uh, we'll see uh, where it goes from here. Obviously, Gibson got cut. Uh, as of filming this, he hasn't been signed to a practice squad or to a team. Uh, but it seemed like the Bears were kind of wiping the slate clean. They, they said they wanted – uh, they they mentioned scheme, thinks he's more of a 3-4 guy, so I think he'll sign elsewhere with the 3-4 team. But um, as far as Mooney goes, I don't think he's going anywhere. All right, guys, appreciate you for tuning in. Long video, lots of stuff to discuss. If you made it to the end of the show, you're a real one. That makes you an FGB member. Spam it in the comments. See you guys soon.